Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our Great Engine Games and our Crazy Leela series and we are continuing a little look at um, some of the one minute challenge that is very strong players playing against Leela with Queen odds um, with just a, a flat bullet one minute time control and uh, trying to make it all work and uh, well they're having a pretty tough time of, uh, of uh, scoring anything against uh, Leela. This was one game that I witnessed and I just, I looked at it and I thought, what have I just seen? So, uh, well, here we are. Have a look whether you like it as much as I do. So, Leela, white, of course, and G4. Well, what Leela does when uh, Leela's uh, queen odds down, it just um, uh, gives away pawns in order to open lines. And those lines will be useful later. Knight takes G4 played. I mean, yeah. You can say, oh, maybe you shouldn't accept it. But, um, I mean, g4 to g5 is going to happen anyway then to disrupt the knight. So, yeah, taking the pawn can't be bad, right? Knight f6, e4, e5. And black gives back the pawn for rapid development, which is a pretty good idea. Takes, takes. It's a sort of a Stafford's gambit, but uh, with white missing a g2 pawn and, of course, also his queen, which is rather more important. So d3, bishop b4, bishop d2. Bishop e6, rook g1. And now castles. I found castles a little bit strange, um, I have to say. I sort of um, thought that the king would be way safer on the queen side uh, somehow, you know. And uh, I mean, not that there should be any particular danger, of course, but, uh, but you know, you know, Leela. So, uh, uh, but black plays it uh, quite uh, sensibly. F4. Now a slightly strange move. Bishop takes c3. I didn't really um like that one very much um i mean swapping off um um a pair of minor pieces but uh yeah i mean it's a nice bishop on the long diagonal for free uh and then black followed up with bishop a2 maybe hoping that leader would uh, try and play for b3 and then you could sacrifice maybe the uh the bishop open up the um the white uh, king side maybe but leela's just not very interested in uh, in that sort of stuff that's the uh, always the funny thing about it that Leela's just interested in um, in attacking, so just le leaves the uh, uh, the bishop there, leave the pawn there, don't try and get and trap it, just comes up with the pieces. But of course, you know, black is still absolutely, totally winning. No, uh, no uh, worries about that. But Leela does manage, <coughs> pardon me, amazingly enough, to build up quite a bit of um, of uh, of pressure. So um, rook along the file. And uh, black goes for the tight at the back uh, approach. Knight e8, rook h3, <coughs> obviously threatening uh, rook takes h6 here. So black plays f6. And I was kind of wondering when I was looking at it, sort of thought, well, you know, how is white going to try and break through that? I mean, it looks pretty solid to me. So um, f5 was played by Leela. Bishop brought back, finally. And bishop d2. So we're looking at uh, playing some old bishop takes h6 uh, tricks. So king h7 played and now rook g4. And uh, yeah, you know, all of a sudden, um, well, we've got to watch out for some rook g7s at time. You never know. And obviously rook h4 and bishop h6 or rook h6 and then bishop h6 and then discovered attack on the king could be dangerous. I mean, you know, when an engine's calculating this, of course, then this doesn't mean anything at all, right? They just see, oh, it's not dangerous. OK, I can leave it. It doesn't matter. But obviously for a human and certainly a human playing at this sort of time control, this is pretty, pretty tough to um, uh, to deal with. I mean, not, uh, you, you know, you, you'll have a, a decent sense of what really is dangerous and what isn't. But yeah, if you miss one, then um, then, um, yeah, that's that's enough. And well, you're going to see what happened in the uh, in the game somehow. So a5 played by uh, black. So black's just decided, OK, this is not dangerous. I'm fine. We're going to try and get our own counterplay. Um, must be said that um, uh, Stockfish was uh, looking at playing this very typical idea for Stockfish. Rook h8 and then ready after rook h4 to go king to g8 and escape like that. Very typical um, uh, defensive method from uh, Stockfish there. Well, rook h4 happened, queen f8, black played. So, you know, using the queen to uh, to defend rather than using the rook there. It's a little bit uh, less uh, elegant, but it's still quite solid. So you ask yourself again, <coughs> how on earth can uh, can um, uh, white do anything here? Well, Leela plays the move d4. 
And you suddenly see a new angle of attack, the uh, e-pawn coming through. Lord knows whether that's particularly dangerous or not, but it's adding extra pressure. That's all you can say. The opponent um, who, uh, yeah, by the way, was uh, this guy was rated nearly 3,100 at bullet. So that's a serious rating, right? Uh, I've never got anywhere close to that. So really strong player. Decided that it wasn't dangerous and played b5. And after e5, played the bishop to d5. So just trying to get out of the way of that e-pawn coming to e6. Dealer plays a calm move, king b1. Not quite sure why, uh, to be honest, but... Uh, that's what Leela did, probably just waiting a little bit and seeing, uh, sort of thinking, well, I've got nothing clear. So let's just wait and see whether a move that Black plays is going to weaken uh, Black's position. Black played a4, which looks quite decent. I mean, um, the pawns are coming, although it's very slow, of course. But OK, you know, uh, even though it's slow, if White doesn't particularly have any attack here, then it doesn't matter, right? It's going to put pressure in the long run. And now Bishop H5. And this was where um, I was you know, I was watching this game live. It was going like, you know, like crazy, right? I mean, I think that uh, Black had only used about 20 seconds uh, so far. And obviously Leela maybe maybe seven or eight. So it's going like crazy. But around here, I started getting a little bit worried, you know, wondering, ooh, 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 wait a minute. There's, uh, you know, Bishop H6 checks and, uh, and then there's going to be sacks here. This looks quite dangerous. It is quite dangerous. Actually, again, of course, the engine's liking Rook H8. You know, this stockfish defense, get the rook defending the uh, the pawn there. Um, and of course, yeah, I mean, with the uh, with the extra queen, I mean, it doesn't matter too much, right? You can uh, afford to give away some material there. Doesn't look comfortable, but uh, but Black decided to ignore it even more. And that's OK. That is actually OK. Um, but it's obviously getting a little bit dangerous. Bishop g6, check, king h8. And now the move e6. As I said, this was going really fast. I didn't quite, wasn't quite 100% sure whether why e6 was going to be particularly helping there. But uh, but okay, you know, I mean, it uh, looks generally useful. Cuts this bishop off from defending along here. But I couldn't quite see, you know, how is that really, really going to help somehow? But uh, yeah, kind of missed something uh, there. Um, black, the black players would like to take, um, the engines would like to take some, uh, uh, fairly uh, um, rigorous uh, approach here. They, they, they like the move bishop e6 and knight d6. The, the point is that we've got this pawn now which is undefended. So if the king ever has to escape, it's got a pawn. This pawn is undefended, so the king could escape out there, basically. I mean, that's the, the basic point of it. <clears throat> but black played the move knight d6. And then whack, bishop takes h6 happens. And, uh, well, I mean, uh, it looks pretty obvious that you have to take this uh, this bishop. I mean, we've got actually quite a quite an attacking force that's uh, developed towards the king. I mean, uh, that would be a pretty, even if you had your queen somewhere extra, you sort of think you could probably mate without that, right? And black took on h6, and this mate just was played out, you know, just like kind of instantly somehow. Both, uh, both sides moving instantly. Takes, 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 king g7, rook h7, king f8. And e7 checkmate. And I just, you know, looked at it. And thought, wow. Wow. Uh, what on earth happened there? I mean, that, that was quite an incredible game. I mean, I, I really, you know, you really felt what was quite incredible to me was that, you know, how um, despite being a queen down, it really felt as if uh, Leela was pushing around this 3100 bullet player, you know, and just dictating terms, basically, you know, and uh, even though just being a total queen down. Interesting thing is that this actually this position was not um, completely winning. Because black could play the move knight takes f5 in this position. And um, the key point about that is that, um, um, well, the fact that we've uh, sort of weakened this e6 pawn again um, means, that, and also the fact that we've uh, sort of got an escape route here, means that the black king can actually escape. It's not obvious at all, but it can. For example, if you go uh, here, then I take, 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 and then king f8. And of course, you know, um, this bishop is not covering that square. So after e7, king e8, <coughs> it looks dangerous, but there's nothing to be done. And actually, rook g1 checkmate is uh, is coming up next. And pretty much anything that um, that um, that uh, uh, white does here doesn't quite work. It's a bit unfair, really. Bishop d2 check. We go knight h6. 
if we take off, then takes takes, and we just sacrifice in here. And then, of course, uh, rook h7, there's king takes g6. Yeah, I mean, you really needed those two two pawns there to solidify, you know, the, the white attacking structure. And uh, by giving material back just with um, with knight takes f5, then black would actually have been able to save himself. But this is not easy at all to spot, I have to say. Not when you get hit with bishop h6 and, uh, you know, and you've got no time at all uh, to uh, to play, basically. You know, it's uh, it's not something that you uh, intuitively see. And on top of that, this gorgeous mating uh, pattern is very unusual. I don't think I've ever seen uh, anything like this before. So it would be very easy to miss as well. But that was the uh, the one minute challenge, and uh, yeah, a thirty one hundred uh, rated player who uh, yeah who just um, yeah did not manage to to do it. I think Leela was winning uh, yeah by you know the normal staggering amount, uh, staggering difference basically. Really quite amazing. So there we are. I hope you're enjoying that. Got a few more of uh, these one minute challenges to come, and also lots of other sort of odds games as well. So do stay tuned. Thanks for watching, and hope to see you at the next video.